What's up guys, Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. This video is an absolute must see, so I hope you enjoy. First things first, we do in fact have Mr. Benoit of the Bank of International Settlements Innovation Hub. The BIS, Central Bank of all central banks, no big deal. And he goes on to say, in quote, shared by Stetis, we need private players, cough cough, Ripple, R3, and payment service providers, PSPs, to be active using CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and connecting different places, nationally and internationally both domestic and cross-border. And is that Chris Giancarlo? He's also an advisor for Ripple. He was formerly the CFTC chairman. There's just so many big names behind the company Ripple, I do not comprehend how people actually discredit them and count them out. They're on the CNBC Disruptor 50 list. And Rosie Rios joins the board of directors. Her name, her actual signature, Rosie Rios, on the board of directors of the company Ripple, is on almost every single US dollar in circulation today. Why? Well, she was formerly the US treasurer. And here's another quote directly from Rosie. Ripple is one of the best examples of how to use cryptocurrency in a substantive and legitimate role to facilitate payments globally. Next up, we have some huge news shared by Unstoppable Domains and Circle. And as we know, Circle did in fact just raise over $400 million. And they are one of the principal operators of USDC or US dollar coin. And they're now integrating with Unstoppable Domains to make these dot coin usernames replace all these lengthy alphanumeric confusing wallet addresses. Simplifying this entire process to transfer USDC, these stable coins, across all of these applications. Directly integrating into USDC's 30 plus wallets and exchange partners today. I know Payments.com has highlighted this this morning. We can see Cointelegraph has covered this, and even Crypto Potato. And I wanted to read one quote from the CEO of Unstoppable Domains, Matthew Gould. In quotes, simple usernames combined with dollar peg stablecoins take the fear and risk out of spending crypto. And I don't know about you, but I have been guilty for sending crypto to an incorrect address and losing all of the money entirely. I know I talked about that on Twitter, not my proudest moment. And it was legitimately the one time I decided not to confirm the address. It only takes one. And friendly reminder, Unstoppable Domains is part of the Open Payments Coalition with the company Ripple and really setting a great example for PayPal and Venmo. Trying to make money, even USDC in this case, is simple as sending an email. This will pave the way, and already is, paving the way for mass adoption, and they've already sold over 1 million domains. And friendly reminder, you guys can find a link in the video description, I'll put it at the top of this video, so you can create your own domain if you have not done so already. Essentially, this is just a username or email address for money. If you're not super tech savvy, no worries, I did in fact create a free crypto tutorial playlist and this can be found in every video description of every video I do. And as you can see on tutorial 6, I actually created an entire video on how to use unstoppable domains, how to connect your wallet, and then you are good to go. So I hope that helps and congrats to unstoppable domains yet again. Anyways, next up, shared by Obvious Rise, great point with Mr. Benoit, head of BIS Innovation Hub. At the Swiss National Bank and Bank of France. So remember, Bank of France has had documents that specifically mention Ethereum and XRP, the XRP ledger, and not only interoperating with the actual blockchains or ledgers, but actually considering building central bank digital currencies on top of said networks. A central bank. The Central Bank of France has said this. And also the World Bank back in the day, I believe 2018, has exclusively praised ODL, which uses XRP as the bridge currency, as innovative technologies. And the Swiss National Bank, well, SNB, where have we seen that before? That's when Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, was on stage with Christine Lagarde. Today, she is the president of the ECB, European Central Bank, but at that time, she was head of the International Monetary Fund. He was also alongside the Central Bank of Hong Kong and a variety of other players. And in quotes, the experiment contributes to this work by exploring how WCBDCs, this is wholesale, this is the big money, wholesale central bank digital currencies could enhance speed, efficiency, and transparency in cross-border use cases. This is something from a while back, Mr. Benoit. BIS Board of Director, his whole history in Wikipedia, global liquidity management, hmm, and central banks on innovative fintech, so I know he's familiar with Ripple, of course. And then even Judy Shelton. And he also did co-chair the G20 Working Group on reforming the World Bank, the same World Bank that praised XRP. And Judy Shelton did, in fact, like this tweet a while back. Now, I'm not sure if she's just liking innovation. Maybe there's conspiracy. Up to you guys, but let's just stay level-headed here. And I also wanted to highlight this. This is a tweet I have. This is all confirmed in real time. But now it seems like Mr. Benoit didn't like it anymore. So it's kind of interesting. So check this out. This was the official tweet by Marlon or Mar Marlon Reyes. And as we can see, Bank of International Settlements talking about this. This gentleman goes, XRP adoption, boom. Now there's 67 likes. I went under this and a lot of people did this as well. This is back in April of 2020. And we can see Mr. Benoit. And I even screenshotted all of this because it says liked by him. 
And I went through his page. I saw the page. It only had five likes at the time, so very little. And then all of a sudden, boom, 34 likes on his page. So this is not Photoshopped. Everybody in the XRP community at the time saw this. Um, oh, thank you for the tweet or the tip Stuart back in the day. And then even Anders L. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just wanted to share. But now as you go back to here and you click 67 likes, and scrolling through this, I don't see his name anymore, so I'm not sure if somebody manages his page or if they disliked it. Who knows? Um, I'm sure it create. I know it created a massive uproar on crypto Twitter. And of course, this gentleman just wants to support innovation in general. But I just want to share that some big players know what XRP is and have recognized it and have even spoken on stage with Brad Garlinghouse. And one of the biggest things that I referenced in yesterday's video was Richard Brown of R3 back in 2014 with that actual document showing XRP, XLM of Stellar, and Ethereum, building the future of part of the new financial system. And it's been six, seven years at this point. They've been working. And of course, even Matthew LINY sharing this, the rise of digital currency, a strategic plan to continue delivering on the IMF International Monetary Fund's mandate. We know R3, a private company, and a huge shareholder of R3 and Ripple is SBI. And Corda, just a little typo, DLT and Corda is agnostic. And of course, the first settlement asset that they did name was XRP. Now, of course, there's huge obvious connections in the documents per XDC and a variety of other assets, but I just wanted to share. And as we know, R3 is part of the International Monetary Fund mandate. He has the document down below right here discussing the rise of digital money. It is not if, it is just when. Cryptocurrencies, a variety of new digital assets are on the rise. Stocks of companies will become tokenized so that they can be fractionalized and better kept track of the actual supply so that there's no more issues like we witnessed with GameStop. Similarly, financial assets that migrate to DLT to simplify backend processing and reconciliation will have to rely on digital money and interoperable networks. Swiss National Bank, SNB, Switzerland, one of the countries that has friendly regulation for XRP as well. And just like that previous quote I showed, they need the private and public to work together. And right here, R3 inside underscore R3 built on R3's Corda with the BIS. And SDX, Global Exchange, we could talk about six, this huge group, and of course the XRP relationship right there. Next up, hopefully this does not get my YouTube video shadow banned like always, but I did catch this screenshot and I know people saw this as well. This is Coinbase Institutional. In yesterday's video, I highlighted it and then they went and deleted this tweet so I cannot find it when Ethereum was at this price, much lower than it is today. Highlighting the death cross, almost trying to influence people to short the market and try to convince people that Ethereum was going down. And of course, I highlighted the weekly time frame, said I think we get a nice little push. And of course, what happened? Well, I woke up to an Ethereum price alert and we did shoot up. Look at this four hour candle on the Ethereum price chart from 2500 all the way up. So a big, nice candle. And again, anybody that shorted the market and believes these huge institutional players got liquidated. So look at this single candle. That's a 6% move. It's not super common, but it does happen. So had to highlight that to each their own. Next up, more articles in the news than ever before. Tether Whale moves $374 million in crypto. And another crypto analyst predicts a big run on the horizon. You can see millions of dollars were on the way from an unknown wallet to Binance. And we can see according to Glassnode, the Bitcoin stablecoin supply ratio, SSR, is still at rock bottom, meaning that there's tons of liquidity on the sidelines, ready to be pushed into the markets. A big run is still upon us. We'll have to see how this month shapes up. I know we saw a few hundred million XRP on the move between Ripple and other exchanges as well. And now I want to highlight this by X underscore Anderson. Breaking news, and this may seem silly to you, but this to me is very important. Arthur Brito, the man, the myth, the legend, the ghost, who is essentially one of the main creators or principal creators of the XRP ledger, right here with only under 7,000 followers, which is laughable to me. He's the creator of PolySign. And just highlighting, Arthur Brito finally now follows two people. And it's strange that he doesn't follow David. But anyways, he follows Roger. And now Jack McDonald, the CEO of PolySign at Standard Custody. And the silliest thing is that in crypto Twitter, you have people with XRP in their name, maybe myself included, that have more followers than this genius. There are cartoon characters on Twitter that could be 18 years old that have never shown their face. And they have more followers than Arthur Brito, one of the biggest contributors to this blockchain revolution, and also may actually know Satoshi. And remember yesterday's video of BNY Mellon, a Ripple partner, and State Street, which also custodies 10% of all the world's wealth, are getting into crypto custody. And now we've shared by XRP Marshall that Citi gets the regulatory nod for fund custody business in China. Friendly reminder, Citi, JPM, JP Morgan, and HSBC essentially oversee 80%, 80% of all cross-border transactions today. 
So notice the first major global custodian allowed to operate an onshore fund custody business in China, tapping into the country's $19 trillion of asset management history. Something to keep an eye on. Looks like Flare Finance is hard at work. I cannot wait to see this interface. Along with the Flare, the Spark token drop, and Songbird. And now we have like four other tokens on the way. Next, I wanted to highlight this by King Solomon. So interesting name for a RippleNet customer platform. Currency Cloud, RippleNet partner, Visa did in fact acquire them. And yes, they have partners. They're partners with hundreds, if not thousands of participants around the globe. So it could just be a coincidence. However, Currency Cloud and their new product called Spark. The international banking experience your customers deserve. Love the logo. Issuable in 34 currencies and your customers get one multi-currency wallet in their own name. And then even King Solomon highlighting this, Currency Cloud announces partnership with Ripple. And this was on Currency Cloud's official website back in 2020. And then on Business Wire, Visa to acquire Currency Cloud. And I know this is common in the world of fintech, but just wanted to share. And last but not least, we have Julia Chatterley of CNN highlighting this. And she's interviewed Alex Holmes of MoneyGram, she's interviewed Brad Garlinghouse, and now she's talking to the final boss. <laughs> and I'm joking here, the Central Bank of Central Banks and General Manager, Augustin Karstens. In quotes, people are asking for digital solutions. We have to rise to the challenge and provide them with cash in the digital form. They talked central bank digital currencies and regulating big tech's role in finance. A step in the right direction, and of course, they always say, we're doing this faster than ever before. I'll believe it when I see it. And always appreciate Julia asking the hard to ask questions. As always, guys, links are in the video description. Check out the free crypto tutorial, and I will catch you in the next video.